What's up guys, welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video we're going to be looking at all the different contacts that you could bring into your project. In twin motion it's very simple using this urban option here. Again, it's, I can't stress enough how simple it is, but how powerful it is with the context that you can quickly bring into your twin motion projects. Before we get into it, I will say if at any point in this video you do learn something, please demolish that like button that tells me that you liked it, enjoyed it, and that you did learn something. Let's get right into it now. I'm in just a, a basic twin motion project. It's a new one. I've went ahead and added a water to the the basic starting ground. That's not a big deal. But in this context tab, we see urban. And I'll cover all these different tools in another video, but as soon as I select urban, it's going to take me to Paris, essentially. And I don't know necessarily why, maybe Twin Motion was first developed there, but regardless, what we're doing here, it's a map of the world, and it's actually open street maps, if you're familiar with that. It's just, open street maps is public data, it's really, really good data. It's all the data that you might want in any kind of context model, be it roads, maybe even trees or buildings, anything that you might want in a context. So I'm from Dallas, Texas, and that's where I am now. And let's go ahead and go to Dallas. And basically all we have to do is zoom into really anywhere that we want and select the area. And it's everything that OpenStreet has as far as data and models is going to be brought into your scene based on your selection. Again, it's very simple. So I'm going to choose this rectangle here. And as soon as I do that, I get this nice highlight of where I will start to import from. As I zoom out, you can see it turns red, and the only reason it turns red is that this would be an immense amount of geometry and information to bring in, and it's just too much for Twin Motion to handle. I completely understand that, so I'm going to zoom into a more centralized place in downtown. Maybe we want to see this much. This should work just fine right there. And typically, you should be able to grab these corners and move them around. I don't know if it's just the new version of twin motion but in previous version i've seen that you are able to adjust the size of this rectangle now i cannot do that for some reason <laughs> let me know in the comment section below if i'm missing something but i think that's just something that was left out of this version of twin motion don't know why again let me know if i'm doing something wrong but i want to choose this portion so everything in open street map that is falling within this highlighted area will be brought into my twin motion projects that I can use and start to adjust. And all I have to do is click grab. Once I do that, you're going to see downloading and depending on the selection size, and you know, I could have zoomed in really like to the city block, like something small. I could have, now I didn't, you know, so it will take a bit longer, but this will take basically as long as it needs to, to fill out all the data. And again, if there's more data, it's going to take longer. So I'm going to skip ahead to where, this has fully been downloaded and I have all my new contacts in here and we can resume from there. Now we can see all of this context was brought in and <laughs> this is a lot of information and you can see it's brought in as context here and expanding this I see roads, buildings, trees, areas and ground. Ground being just the base ground of that rectangle. So very interesting, really helpful because, I mean, this is a lot of context and and I really enjoy all the information that's in OpenStreetMap because this is a lot of information and y you can manipulate all this data. This is not just one giant object that's been brought into your, your twin motion project now. So I've got buildings and it's really nice because maybe... There's a lot more data about a specific building in OpenStreetMap, such as, you know, these different named buildings. Like, they're actually the names of the building. Like, this is Dallas City Hall. It's right there. That's great. You know, you can start to click on these and see, oh, that's Renaissance Tower. Like you, you actually see what all of these are. But not only that, now maybe, maybe you don't care about that. Maybe it doesn't matter so much. And you want a, a nice presentation for what you're looking for. Now, you actually have the ability to adjust all of these models individually. If you see, as soon as I click on this, I can see the height is 128 feet. Now, I'm sure that's approximate, but even still, that's pretty great that it brings it in with that kind of height. But given that, I also have the ability to adjust that height and to see the result with the shadows and everything in the model impacted just by this height change. And I have the ability to bring this up all the way as, from what I can tell, 
to the height of the highest building brought into the project. So in this case, I think one of these, yeah, this building here, Renaissance Tower, it's 820 feet. So I can't bring any of these buildings higher than 820 feet. I can always input a specific value, and I you like to think I could put in a higher value than 820, but even putting in 1,200, I get 820. So that's something to be aware of. You might want to make sure you have a really tall tower if you want to adjust some of these, or you know, just to you know bring in objects by yourself and uh, apart from the context model so that you can adjust the height better that way. But honestly, the amount of control that you have over this is amazing, and it's really easy. So coming in here, like I could easily add uh, an asphalt material to this very quickly. So in materials, I can go down to ground and then man-made and then all these different asphalts. And immediately, I can get this nice-looking asphalt. I can adjust the scale if I need to to make this look right. Again, I can change all these different concretes if I want to change and update the, the pavement. All the grass is here. Now, we probably do want to add some grass, nature, like this is actual grass. You can change the look of the grass if you want. Anything like that, it's very simple to do. It's not hard, but now you have all of this information that you can work with and start to adjust, and it's all context. It's really great. So, like, if you have your project here in this plaza, all of these buildings are here as context, and you can adjust them as you need to. Now, the unfortunate part about the context of the buildings is that maybe you want to change the material of some of these buildings, and let's say I want to use this metal material, Unfortunately, because of the way they're brought in and set up, it's going to impact every single building, which is unfortunate, but just so you know that, that's how, that's how it works. It is too bad, but I understand just the way it is bringing all these things in. So a neutral color is probably more of what you're after when it comes to something like that. So you can get the idea of the scale. Makes a little more sense that way. And again, besides all the materials, you can always move specific elements around. Again, these are all these are all their own. Like I can simply move this building around if I need it in a different location. I can move this pavement pavement down if I want. You know, things like that. All of this can be adjusted now that it's been brought into your project. And a lot of times what I want to do is maybe I don't like these trees. It is really nice that the trees that are brought in to uh, from OpenStreetMap are actually replaced in twin motion with twin motion trees. That's really nice and helpful because that saves you a little bit of time in replacing those trees. Because sometimes there can be a lot, I'm sure. There's not a lot here necessarily, but nonetheless, it is nice that Twin Motion does that for you. Of course, we can always change the time of day, anything like that. All this is affected by the context itself. The context serves as actual context. It's, it's objects. Everything you might want in a context model is here. This is really nice, really simple and looks pretty good. So that will do it for context in Twin Motion. Bringing it in from OpenStreetMap, all the data that's available to you, it's really nice, really simple, easy to use, and really gets you off the ground when it comes to context really quickly. If you have any questions about context, leave those in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them all. Stick around for other Twin Motion videos coming out in the very near future. Also, if you did learn something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me. It tells you that you did learn something and that you enjoyed the video. And please consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That always helps. Thank you very much for that. Hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.